Like what? I had to wear pasties for the first time at a convention. Or they wouldn't let me on the show floor. I had to cover up, even though it was covered up. Hello, it's Vivid Vision. Today, I'm going to talk about the event, Cosholic, yay! Usually, I would do a convention vlog about the cosplay events I go to, but this event is an 18 plus event, so I was not allowed to take any footages inside the event. So I'm gonna do a, I guess, commentary style to explain my experiences at the event. I heard about this event from some of my online cosplay peers as Japan's most erotic cosplay event and it's just for cosplay. So I'm like, I have to check this event out, come on! I did not know what to expect when I went to this event because there isn't very much about it on the internet. And when I went, it completely blew my mind away. Guys, if you ever get to go to Japan and cosplay is your thing, you need to check this out. And of course, you have to be 18 plus to go. Cosholic is held in Tokyo and they have it twice a year, one in the spring and one in winter. And I went to the winter session on December 28th. I did get some footages outside of the event with the lineups and everything. Yeah, we just got to the Tokyo Ritsu Center for the convention. Uh, there's people lining up. I have a booth. We can go in without lining up in the cold. Yeah, I'm cold. <laughs> I think we go here. I'm just following people. Okay. Okay. Holy crap. This is this is the lineup for people who are setting up at the booth. Admission was 2000 yen per person. The event was from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., which isn't a very long event. It's about 5 hours you know that you have to line up really early so that you can get in line to get the products of your favorite cosplayers because they do sell out. So after going through the lineup, we realized that none of the staff spoke English. And my Japanese is not very good. It's like enough to get around to order food on the menu, but not to describe things. I was like, oh shoot, what do I do? Yeah. Uh, what is your age? Yeah. Oh, oh. This is an 18 plus event, so they have to ID all of you. I was wondering what he was asking for. So he's asking for age. This is the instruction manual I got in the mail. You can only sign up for this event if you have a local Japanese address. So I sent my application to a friend that's living in Tokyo currently. So I just picked it up from him yesterday. That's why I haven't really had a chance to go over the instruction manual. But all of the information is online as well. Instructions right here, it does ask you to show your identification to prove that you're over 18. Probably should have read the instructions before I came, but I can't read this. Yep. My package came with three complimentary passes. Usually one is for the cosplayer and two helpers that will assist you at your booth. The official guidebook for Cosholic. There is so much culture inside and it's very, very lewd. It's the floor plan for Cosholic. And there's so many cosplayers here. It looks like there's like, what, I don't know, a couple hundred. And I am at H32, this corner booth right here, as Vivid Vision. Setting up my booth. Apparently we only get like the three inch part of the table, or sorry, four inch, because everyone splits it and shares it. There's my poster. Oh yeah, so nice. Now normally at a North American convention, you just stroll right in in your cosplay. Uh, you can, you know, go outside in public in your cosplay, no problem. But you cannot do that in Japan. It's a big no-no. They have really strict costume or decency laws in Japan, so you can't go frolicking around in your cosplay at all. That's why they have these separate change rooms, like a huge change room space for the cosplayers to get into their cosplay at the event. When you first walk into the cosplay change room area, they will direct you and show you which space to sit at. You get this tiny little space and you gotta sit in your square. Put on your makeup and your costume in that tiny square because you're sharing this with a lot of other cosplayers as well. Because in Japan, girls and I guess guys are all open to their body. Um, people actually take off all their clothes. They're changing in there, no problem. So I was a little shy with that because I'm not used to going publicly 
naked <laughs> with strangers. I actually wore this costume to the event and I had this on. So I just put over my regular clothes and traveled with my jacket so that I was fully clothed in public. The costume I wore to this event is a Tago Race Queen version from Azure Lane. And as I was getting up and about to leave the change room, I looked around like, oh my God, I did not realize I actually had a lot more clothing on than the other girls. And I was like, this outfit is actually not very clothed, but the other girls were wearing even less clothing than me. Wish I could show you guys, but of course I was not allowed to take any footages or photos there. I was a little shocked. Girls were literally wearing stuff I would wear, say for Patreon and only shoot inside a private studio or my home with people I trust. But they were actually wearing these outside in public to this public event. It was like sheer lingerie, beaded thongs. I just, it was just, my mind was blown. But the girls were just wearing lingerie and very fetish clothing. I'm not complaining. I like the culture. It was very eye-opener, like literally eye-opener. And it was a cool experience. As I left the change room, there was one staff member at the exit of the change room and the girls were all lining up to go outside and I was like, what's going on? Then I realized the staff member was checking the girls. She was making sure they were decent. She actually had to do two checks for every single girl. Of course, as a foreigner, I didn't realize you had to cover up those parts. I was like, what am I supposed to cover it up with? From my understanding that I can purchase band-aids from her for 500 yen, which is like $5 US, and then I can tape it on. Like what? I had to wear pasties for the first time at a convention, or they wouldn't let me on the show floor, even though it was covered up. So this is where you enter into the hall and the change rooms on the side here. As you go from this side, from the left to the right side, the cosplays get looter and looter and looter. We actually saw some AV girls around this side of the hall. At the booze, a lot of cosplayers do not sell posters, which is what most of the American, like North American conventions sell. What they sell is DVDs and photo books. And I'm thinking it's because Japanese homes are quite small. There isn't much wall space to put up posters. So that's why they collect books and DVDs instead. One of the special features at Cosholic was getting these photo tickets. Give you 50 of these photo tickets. Uh, what happens is because this is an 18 plus event, you cannot take any photos of the cosplayers even at their booth. You have to purchase these tickets and then you can go off to the side and the photographer can take three minutes of photos with you at the wall. I didn't realize that actually the girls would do it for one minute. 1,000 yen for one minute. And some of the really popular girls would be splitting it up with two photographers for 30 seconds for 1,000 yen just because they wanted to get through more people. I actually didn't realize, I thought they buy the ticket and then you go take the photos right away. But some of the girls, what they did was they sold the batch of tickets and said that from four to 5 p.m. I will be offering my photos at the side of the wall and then people would line up to go take the photos. I would look at the wall on the side and I would see a bunch of girls having their own station on the side and the photographers would be lining up to take photos of them. As I was panning through the wall, I could not believe my eyes of the type of poses these girls are doing. I literally had to like turn my head back and do a double take like, are you serious? Is that what she's doing? Like, I was so shocked. It's something I would do at home or in a studio to take photos for a private Patreon set, but they actually did it out in public. They did really, really very sexy, lewd photos. They like opened their legs, pulled up their tops. It was just like something you would see out of an AV magazine. <laughs> Mind blown, I am taking in the culture. Thank you so much. <laughs> One of the things I actually enjoyed was that the bathroom line was so short. Usually at any convention, the female bathroom line is like out the door super long because 99% of the patrons there were male. The lineup for like the male bathroom was like half an hour long, whereas the female bathroom was like maybe two seconds. I was like, yay, I can go pee without having to wait in line. <laughs> I was hanging out at my booth and I was really happy that some of my fans came to see me and brought me presents. I ate it already because my fans know I love eating food. 
Thank you very much for all the delicious Japanese snacks and drinks. I also got a lot of presents from some of the Japanese cosplayers at the event. They gave me some of their DVDs and photo books and I of course gave them back my photo book. I was so happy that I got some DVDs. I was like, yay, Japanese cosplayers. All in all, it was a very eye-opening experience. I enjoyed every moment of it. I was shocked quite a few times. It was worth the experience. I would definitely go back again. If you guys are into cosplay culture and the lewd culture, you should definitely check it out. Thanks so much for watching this YouTube episode. If you like my cosplay content, please like and subscribe to my channel and feel free to drop me any questions in the comment section below. I'm actually thinking of pooling some of the questions and doing a Q&A episode for the next YouTube video. So go ahead and ask me anything you want. Until next time, see you. Thank <laughs> you.